Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gents, I'm downloading a software. You can go to Try Replay, T R Y, Replay, R E P L A Y dot I O I as an Ivan, O as an Oliver. Try Replay dot I O. You're going to like it, I promise you, especially if you watched the last video did last night from the cell phone. All right, got to make this quick because I have 13 minutes before I have another consult. Ladies and gentlemen, the. Let, let's just go ahead and talk about value. A young lady called. She had a situation. She had a son. Her son was charged with a crime that could guarantee up to 15 years. And the situation was he had a prior. We had a consult. I told her what to do. I helped her put together a motion for the case. She took her about Two weeks to finish the motion because you know how people want to be perfect. She put the motion on the record. Now, remember, he had an attorney. They got rid of the attorney with that letter. But she also put other things in there that she was told that was suggested that she add, and she did that. Well, the sentencing happened last week. She just called me today to let me, well, to say thank you. Why? Because he is on probation. Two years, doesn't have to do that whole 15 blah, blah, blah year thing. All of the threats, we were able to determine that his prior, they couldn't charge him with the prior, even though they were threatening to charge him with the prior. And there was no witness to testify, even though they were threatening that they would call the person as a witness. But I told them that that's exactly what was going to happen. And probation, they did get their pound of flesh, their two counts of blah, blah, blah. but. No jail time. Just that simple. Yeah, in my opinion, in a situation like that, the consultation was worth it. Now, I didn't say that. She told me. I said, you know it was that document you put on the record that got all of this going. She says, no, well, no, it was your help that did this. I said, no, you put the document on the record. You see, has she not filed that on the record in a case that she's not even a party? This was her son. She filed it on her son's behalf. And he's not going to nobody's jail. Now, I told her, be careful because they like to violate people on probation. That's their angle. That's their game. That's what they do all the time. Okay? So... My hope is everything will work out for them. Now, that was the first call I received. No, the second call I received. The first call I received was from a young lady who we were talking about a situation where the HOA and management were trying to evict them. She called me. I told her what she needed to do. They were planning on moving anyway, but they weren't planning on moving now. So we put together some things. She utilized the GPT, just like the video I just did, the Empowerment Series video number 26, I think it's A1 or whichever, or A2. That video telling you guys about how to use ChatGPT to produce your motions and how to get it to verify information. She did the exact same thing without the video because I showed her how to do that during the consult. She did that. Ladies and gentlemen, and she told me today, she said, oh, the UD got dismissed. And so we don't have to worry about that. But she says, we're planning on moving anyway. Those were her exact words to me this morning. So what I'm trying to tell all of you is I'm not a YouTuber, never was a YouTuber. I don't do YouTube content. I just talk on video. Individuals. When they need my time, like right now, I got to do this consult, but I'm also supposed to be doing work for the company, including putting that letter out for all of you so that you all will have that letter to use for your all your debts. You just have to modify it, and we'll do a video explaining that. But I still have to work on that in the background, and I still have to do other things with the company, and then I have to put out the invitation for people because we're going to be looking for coders, individuals who know how to code, because I'm getting ready to start up a company with a group of people. That's right. We're going to actually start a corporation. Now, when I say start a corporation, we're not going to start. We're going to use one of our shell corporations. We're going to start a corporation, and we're going to be using people who know coding, people who know how to create apps. 
that's what I'll be looking for. I'll be putting out the video. Do not email me. Do not try to contact any of the companies. Do not try to contact me regarding this. I will let you know. All right. I want to show you guys something real quick. I've been yelling and screaming this. Been screaming and yelling it. I want you all to pay attention. When a person enters a plea of any kind, they are under long-standing principle of law admitting to the genius of the record. Uh, we need you to enter a plea of not guilty, guilty, or no contest. What you mean you need me to enter a plea of guilty, not guilty, no contest? I'd say innocent, mother... No, you can't enter a plea at all. You cannot enter a plea at all. Give me a second. I want to make it shareable. Okay? And it's copied the link so that you guys can see this. Now, this is what I want you to pay attention to. Y'all need to pay attention. This is perplexity.ai. When a person enters a plea of any kind, they are under a long-standing principle of law admitting to the genius of the record. This legal concept is exemplified in various cases, such as the lawsuit involving Jonathan Lee Ritchie's, known for filing numerous lawsuits, including against the Guinness Book of World Record for naming him as the most litigious. He's the most litigious man on the planet. He is filing litigations 24 hours a day. So like, get you this. Why is he doing it? Anyway, another example is the case of John Delaney. And Mr. John Delaney, a former NBA referee, pled guilty to federal charges relating to betting scandal in 2007. Y'all remember that, showing how the NBA games are fixed. These instances highlight that entering a plea can have significant legal impacts and consequences within the judicial scheme. Now, hold on. That didn't tell me much. So what is the meaning of admitting to the genius of the record in legal terms? Pay attention when you enter a plea of guilty, not guilty, or no contest. Or put on the record pleading paper. In legal terms, admitting to the genius of the record refers to a concept where an individual acknowledges the truthfulness of the claim or statement, often serving as a confession of guilt in a criminal law, criminal matter, criminal matter, criminal law, admitting or confessing guilt. Ladies and gentlemen, when you enter a plea, you're admitting that you did it. You're saying, I'm guilty. That's why we're creating a document where you guys can go after these judges. The people who are in prison can go after these judges for violating their rights and violating the law. Do you know that if you admit something like this, they have to tell you the consequences of what you just did? This acknowledgement becomes part of the official record in legal proceedings establishing certain facts that can contribute to proving guilt or innocence. The phrase is linked to presenting evidence in a lawsuit and having evidence officially recorded as part of the legal process. It signifies the formal acceptance and recognition of the information presented which can have significant implications within the judicial system, which is why you got to challenge the stupid court jurisdiction in the first place. From the very beginning, you do not enter a plea, and the court cannot enter a plea on your behalf. By entering a plea on your behalf, they're submitting you to involuntary servitude. Let's prove servitude. What is the origin of the phrase admitting the genius of the record? The origin of the phrase admitting the genius of the record in legal terms is connected with the concept of admitting or acknowledging the truthfulness of a claim, often serving as a confession of guilt in criminal law. This acknowledgement becomes part of the official record in legal proceedings establishing certain facts and can contribute to proving guilt or innocence. This phrase is linked to presenting evidence in a lawsuit and having the evidence officially recorded as part of the process. Ladies and gentlemen, admitting the genius of the record. Nobody tells you that that's what you're doing when you enter a plea. They don't tell you that you're submitting to the court's jurisdiction when you enter a plea. Say what? Y'all need to pay attention. Somebody's been trying to tell you. Everybody who is in jail is in jail because they volunteered. 
they admitted themselves to the court, just like you admit yourself to a hospital. Pay attention. They admitted the evidence was accurate. They admitted that the prosecution doesn't have to prove nothing. Y'all need to document this. You got somebody who's in jail and somebody entered a plea on their behalf or told them they needed to enter a plea or had an arraignment hearing. There was no law requiring an arraignment. An arraignment is so that you can admit guilt. That's why they have arraignment hearings. Hey, I got to go, ladies and gentlemen, but I just wanted to share this with you guys. All right? Have a good day.